Hey look, an icebreak video. This video is more of a test to see if I can make videos like these and experiment more with editing like what I did with the Connect 4 tournament series. And what a better series to try this on than the Mario & Luigi RPG series. The Mario & Luigi games are up there some of my favourite RPGs of all time, with Bowser's Inside Story and Dream Team being up there with two of my favourite Mario games of all time. If you don't know how icebergs work then... Where the fuck have you been the past year? Special thanks to Cross and Drax for approaching me with this iceberg. Special thanks to Mish Koz for the inspiration. And special thanks to Afid Kirby for the iceberg this video is based on. Now that out of the way, let's get started. Fofo and Partners in Time After the events of the first game, Fofo reappears in the second game in the series, Partners in Time. His role, however, wasn't as big as it was in the first game. He can be found in the sewers of Peach's Castle, and sells rare badges in exchange for beans. There's not really much to say about this one, other than the fact that he mentions that he plans to return in the future then proceeds to foreshadow his role as the main villain of Bowser's inside story. Rookie is Bowser. Alright, in Superstar Saga, there was this major plot twist where it turned out that Popple's psychic Rookie was Bowser. Yeah, that's it. I mean, it was painfully obvious, but there's at least one person out there who didn't know this. Luigi has a crush on Peasley. What? Yeah, this is a fanship, apparently. The ship mainly pulls from the fact Peasley is one of the few characters to not forget Luigi's name and treats him with respect typically. Unlike most NPCs, he will usually refer to Mario as Mr. Red or other names instead. However, there is no rivalry canonically between the Red Plumber and Bianish Prince. Fanfics may portray otherwise, though. Luigi is also shown to appreciate Peasley highly. So much so that the ship portrays a one-sided love from Luigi's perspective. After the scene where Peasley pokes Luigi multiple times, for example, Luigi is shown to be blushing. It is worth noting that what Peasley was poking with his sword was Luigi's butt. Fans of the ship often joke about the poking scene constantly to where there is a 5 minute version on YouTube. Furthermore, out of the two brothers, Luigi interacts with Peasley the most. This is shown by the Piranha Bean fight, where only Luigi is playable, and the game's ending. Both instances, once again, Portray Luigi acting bashful or emotional around the prince. Peasley will also give important key items to Luigi only, showing that he favors the younger Mario brother. Great. Kirby story. This is referring to one of the movie posters found in Yoshi Theater in Superstar Saga. Nothing much, just a neat easter egg referencing Kirby. Piranha Bean is Petey Piranha's child. I don't really know where this came from honestly, my only guess is that this theory is based on how similar they both look. Not really much here. Luigi Socks Luigi can be seen wearing striped socks in the artwork of all the games before Paper Jam. These don't really show up anywhere else in the Mario franchise, at least to my knowledge. There's also this chance that Nintendo have been actively censoring Luigi Socks in the artwork of the remakes and Paper Jam for some fucking reason. Wario and Waluigi sequel to Bowser's Inside Story. This is probably referring to the very popular fan-made box art. This is a popular fan concept, but like, nothing official. Star Beans Cafe Cameos. Now this is an interesting one that I remember the hearing about a while ago. To give context, the Star Beans Cafe is an optional area in Superstar Saga. It's the area where you use the beans that you have collected to brew coffee that can boost stats. Whenever you brew each coffee for the first time, a cutscene will trigger where Professor E. Gad will appear and try the coffee. The cutscene will be different depending on what coffee is brewed. However, according to the game's code, E. Gad was originally meant to show up for only one of these cutscenes, and the other Nintendo characters were meant to cameo and try the coffee. These characters were Wario, Fox McCloud, Olimar, Samus, the racer from Excitebike, and Link. You also would have been given a set of unused gifts, which although don't have sprites, unused text was found that referenced these. Only the Excite Spring was used. Leftovers of these can be found in the game's files in the form of sprites, animations, and leftover text. All of these can be found in the cutting room floor, link to that is in the description.
The entirety of Paper Mario is a fictional book written by someone in the Mario and Luigi universe. Another fan theory, I'm assuming this has to do with the book that the paper characters came from in Paper Jam. Whether it does or not, I doubt this is the case, but it's an interesting theory nonetheless. Scoop Bloop Scoop Bloop is an unused enemy from Partners in Time. It was first seen in the E3 trailer and can be seen in some pre-release material. The enemy's data and graphics remain in the game's files. Apparently it was meant to be found in Yoshi's Island and Yu's Belly, despite it showing up in Vim's factory in the E3 trailer. Tomato Adventure Tomato Adventure is the second game created by Alpha Dream that was only released in Japan on Game Boy Advance, with Superstar Saga being their fourth game. Not really much to say here, other than the fact that the gameplay apparently bears a resemblance to Superstar Saga. I wouldn't know because I haven't played it. Evo Globin Evo Globins are meant to be a more evolved species of Emoglobin. These are found in a romp command and help revive Bowser to trigger the giant battles. Rock Madame Rom-Com Movie Much like Kirby's story, this is referring to one of the movie posters found in Superstar Saga's Yoshi Theater. This one, however, only appears in the 3DS remake. Apparently, it stars the title character and Brock Monsieur, and it's meant to be referencing their failed relationship before the events of Bowser's Inside Story. Cuzzle and Iggy Cooper In Bowser Jr.'s journey, Iggy ends up getting amnesia after getting knocked off a cliff by BFF. Cuzzle ends up mistaken taking him for his lost grandson named Charlie, before Iggy gets cured of his amnesia. I don't really know what else to say about this one, never really got that far in Bowser Jr's journey because of how boring it was. I'll just move on to layer 4. Unused Cloaked Beanish Idle animations for an unused cloaked mysterious looking Beanish character was found in the game's files. No clue what this character is meant to be as there's no reference to it in the game's code. Cat Cletter and Queen Bean used to be lovers. Alright, so uh, I originally thought this was originally referring to like a detail I didn't even notice while playing the game myself. Then I started researching it and it led me to another fucking fanship. Throughout the game. Catletta is shown to know more details about the castle than most other NPCs. Not only does she perfectly disguise herself as Lady Lima twice, but she knows that fixing the castle's plumbing will cause the Bean Star to appear. Neither Queen Bean nor Prince Peasley call her degrading names either. Rather, they will only do such to her assistant, Fawful. With that stated, Fans speculate that Cacletta and Queen Bean originally had a close relationship with each other. Some believe Cacletta to have originally been a servant of Beans akin to Lady Lima, while others will go further and state that the pair used to be romantically involved. Either way, if the theory is in fact true, an unknown event caused the pair to split. Doctors hate Kylie Cooper. This is a reference to the Doctor's Hater ads for anti-aging cream. Due to the fact that she did not age at all from the events of Partners in Time to Dream Team, shrooms are still running amok. In Bowser's Inside Story, it is revealed that Bowser has frozen some of the shrooms after the events of Partners in Time. Later in the game, an optional boss with three shrooms can be found in the Frozen Preservation Room which requires a password to enter. Other shrooms can be seen in the background of the battle. There's also reason to believe that Fawful has released some of them. Early in the game, a shroom can be found in Fawful Theater. If you interact with it, it just stares blankly without saying anything. Gimmick Land Gimmick Land was a cancelled Game Boy Color game that was meant to be Alpha Dream's second game. After Alpha Dream released their first game, Nintendo wanted to work with them on a new RPG. This RPG would be titled Gimmick Land. The game was pretty much finished and almost ready for release. However, Nintendo ended up releasing releasing the Game Boy Advance, essentially making the colour obsolete. Avogen realised this and decided to redevelop the game for Game Boy Advance. This would eventually become Tomato Adventure. Yes, that same game that was mentioned earlier. For a while, all we got from Gimmick Land was two screenshots. However, during the Giga leak, yes, that same leak that got us Luigi and Mario 64, an unfinished prototype was leaked. It was called Gimmick Land Tomato Atama No Hitmit 2, or Gimmick Land Tomato Head Secret. If you want to know more about this prototype, then I recommend and check in the description for a link to the current room floor page on it. Yes, we sure like to reference the current room floor a lot. Fungi Town Arcade Guy was hired by Fawful. After clearing the minigame in the arcade, Mario ends up winning an Invincer Shroom. However, it turns out that the Invincer Shroom was actually a poison mushroom. 
After eating it, Luigi has to go get a cure for the poison. With this in mind, it wouldn't be surprised if the guy who runs the arcade is actually really working for Fossil and gave it to Mario on purpose. Yeah, Minion's Quest kind of flies in the face of his theory. During Minion's Quest, Captain Goomba has to find an Invincer Shroom, but ends up finding the Poison Mushroom instead, and mistakes it for the Invincer Shroom. So canonically, it's the fault of Captain Goomba's dumbass, not the arcade guy. Fawful was planning to overthrow Cat Cletter. In the remake of Superstar Saga, Fawful had old beta versions of the McCawfuls underneath the floors of Bowser's castle, which is something Cat Cletter was completely unaware of. Quote from the person who made the iceberg, Why would he hide that to her, if not to potentially overthrow her? Bowser has Elder Princess Shrew frozen in his basement. As mentioned earlier, frozen shrews can be seen in the background of the optional battle with the shrews. However, one thing that I neglected to mention is that Elder Princess Shrew, the final boss of Partners in Time, can be seen among all of the frozen shrews. In the remake, the younger Princess Shrew can be seen beside her. Vim. Vim is the life force of the Toad species and has only appeared in Partners in Time. The shrews end up using this to power their UFOs. Without it, Toads will die. It's essentially blood. However, for obvious reasons, they can't call it that. The Oho Gods. This is referring to the two gods found in Superstar Saga's Oho Oasis. These two are the ones that gave Mario and Luigi their fire and lightning powers. Drybone's evolutionary lineage. This one is probably referring to the fact that the dry bones look different in Superstar Saga compared to the others. Every civilized species has Mario and Luigi counterparts. Characters dressed in red and green tend to show up as tutorials to demonstrate a new mechanic that both Mario and Luigi will have to use. This led to a fan theory that every civilized species has Mario and Luigi counterparts. As the title says. Joke's End is a cemetery. Joke's End is a frozen palace in Superstar Saga that can only be accessed via surfing or a warp pipe. The palace seems to only be habited by Jojora and her friends. However, one line of dialogue indicates that there are more occupants. Joke's End is also known as a graveyard for bad jokes despite the fact that no jokes can be seen. This adds to the theory that Joke's End is literally a cemetery. Cabot confiscated Bowser Jr's power paintbrush after the events of Mario Sunshine. Alright, the first one I'm genuinely stumped on. I'm pretty sure this is another theory, not sure where it comes from or what I have to say about it other than I know it's an interesting idea. One toad still has the blobs. Towards the end of Bowser's inside story, all toads infected by the blobs end up getting cured by the miracle cure. However, it seems that one toad didn't get cured. That toad can be found in Toad Town, however he says that he always looked like that so... I, I don't know. Woohoo University was a front for a weapons factory. Woohoo University is a university in the Bean Bean Kingdom that appears in Superstar Saga. Once again, I'm not entirely sure what to say about this other than, than it's an interesting idea. Plus, the fact that Fawful was a student here according to a portrait in the remake probably adds to this. Feral vs Domesticated Bee Hoss Bee Hosses in Bowser's Inside Story are way nicer than the ones in Dream Team. This is most likely because the Summon Woods are naturally feral, or maybe because they are found in the second to last area. Dream Beats Psychological Warfare Dream Beats are a type of music that make an appearance in Dream Team. They pretty much cause anyone who hears it to fall asleep. Essentially the worst genre of music. Pipes in the overworld that lead inside Bowser. In the pipe yard there are warp pipes that allow Mario and Luigi to exit Bowser's body. How did these get in here? Probably got inhaled by Bowser in the beginning of the game. The best fitness friends are made out of ground up meat. The best fitness friends are the main antagonists of Bowser Jr's journey. No clue what to say about this one. The only things that hint at this are the fact that they look like me and their names, I, I guess. In game, it's not really hinted at what BFF even is. Besides an interview with Alpha Dream, where they say that they are the same species as Midbus. Donkey Kong is dead. Oh, oh, 
god. In all seriousness, this is referring to the skeleton Kong named Bink. Bink is the member of the SS Jokola and appears in the barrel minigame needed to get the membership card. The only connections Bink has to Donkey Kong is that, well, he's a Kong, he throws barrels and eats bananas. Fawful is hiding in a Z Keeper costume in Dream Team. In Dream Team, there's a Z Keeper costume guy who says, quote, I have excitement, the same way Fawful speaks, though I'm pretty sure Fawful is actually dead after the events of Bowser's Inside Story, so I'm pretty sure this is just a coincidence. Evil Cows. This is referring to a line from Kamek from Partners in Time. He says to baby Bowser that evil cows are where he got the milk from. Soul Bubbles are fallen star sprites. A very interesting theory. So, Soul Bubbles. These are all adorable creatures that appear in Partners in Time. Don't, don't they look a bit like star sprites? For example, Starlo. They look fairly similar. This along with the Soul Bubbles dead eyes adds to the theory that the Soul Bubbles are fallen star sprites. Rookie is not Bowser. An obvious twist to the entry from the first layer. Although, I have no clue what to say about it. I'll just quote what the Iceberg Maker said. Rookie not being Bowser is mostly a joke because it's funny. When I was younger, I actually never connected the darts. I just thought Rookie was a weird new poopling. Fawful used genetically modified swarms to make an army. The final entry on this iceberg. Here is my best interpretation of it using Aphid Kirby's own explanation. The chain chawfuls are simply regular chain chomps with a swarm controlling their minds. With this in mind, perhaps that's how all the other creatures are fawfulized. Well, that's the end of the iceberg. That was very fun to make and I hope you all have enjoyed it. Once again, special thanks to Aphid Kirby for making the iceberg. Quick shout out to Reesey Boy. He made a comment that I attempted to explain as much as he could, but I wanted to see how much I could do with simply my own research and memory. I occasionally check the comment and Aphid Kirby's own explanations when I was truly stumped on a specific detail, which thankfully there weren't many. As I mentioned in the intro, this video is more of a test. Feel free to leave your criticisms in the comments as they are truly needed. Anyways, thanks for watching. See you whenever the fuck I make another video.